please join me in welcoming Dr. Patrick Leiden. When I started medical school in 1978, we were told stroke was over in the first minute. You had one minute and then the brain was dead. This galvanized a generation of us to go into stroke research to try to find something to cure patients. Now about uh, 1985, Dr. Zivin published a paper, and this paper showed for the first time using a clot model that TPA could improve, thrombolysis could improve uh, clinical outcome, neurological outcome. And in the 90s, when there was no treatment for stroke, there's no pre-hospital stroke scale, there's no stroke centers, no stroke tackle boxes, no stroke code, and of course there was no TPA. Back then, none of this existed. It all had to be invented from, from square one. Giving TPA was like being some kind of test pilot. Our job was to take a brand new machine up into the air for the first time to find out if it would crash and burn. It was a group of people that were willing to try some, some new stuff. And we needed new stuff. We had a lot to do. We had a lot of problems to solve. We actually started to care when the stroke started, ask people when did it start. We had to learn how to read CAT scans on the monitor because we couldn't wait for it to be printed on the film. We had to learn what the hyperdense artery sign was. We didn't know about the term door to needle, but we cared a lot about getting the patient through the, through the system quickly. It takes every department in the hospital to treat stroke patients. Neurosurgery, imaging, neurology, ED, um, PT, OT, dietary, even the security guard out in triage has to know how to recognize a stroke. In medical research, it is our honor to be allowed to ignore the dogma and the graybeard old guard so that we can create something that did not exist before.